some announcements from Daddy Dana White. Oh, thank you, Dana. Thank you, Dana. First of all, though, mate, you fucking dropped the ball the other day when you did that that announcement. So first of all, he said he was going to announce some fights midnight on, uh, I think, Wednesday. Postponed it 24 hours, so it was going to be midnight the next day. Um, he claimed it was a title fight for UFC 300, got everyone so hyped. We all thought it was going to be fucking Pereira versus um, Izzy, maybe. Pereira versus... Espinal. Uh, Espinal, maybe. <laughs> you never know, right? Or Espinal versus Garn or something. Uh, he, he dropped... What did he drop, Jackson? What did he do? He dropped the woman's flyweight? Was it flyweight? Yes. Woman's flyweight title fight. Between Zhang Wei Li and who was the other woman? Lee. And Lee. Her name is Lee. Um well, uh, So she is fighting Yan. Uh Yang Xiaonan. Yang Xiaonan. It's a great fight, don't get me wrong. This is a great fight. And I've seen a lot of people talking shit saying, Oh, only casuals think that this is a bad fight. But it's like, bro, it's UFC three hundred. Put this fight like so many commentators have been saying. Put this fucking fight in China. It's Chinese versus Chinese woman's fucking title fight. The first time ever. Yeah. Put it in China. You're trying to build the Asian audience, the Chinese audience. I think there is a little bit of a problem with the uh, with getting the UFC to China at the moment. Oh, they, they, they've well, had they'd... fights there before. No, I'm not saying that, but they had that fight card booked there. What? It was one of the last ones last year. Um, And then all of a sudden, very last minute, they weren't able to do it in China anymore. And they had to... That happened. Yes. Yep. Is that not just something we talked about? Like no. a rumor? No. Pull it up, Jamie. Um, no, no, they had a, they had a, uh, yeah, a, a whole event booked in China. Right. And uh, that was why the whole card was stacked maybe, with, maybe that's with the Asian and, and Chinese fighters. It could be the reason. But, fuck, man. It's, I think it's dropping the ball. Put it in China at some point when they figure it out. Don't have this hog up a, a fucking fight on UFC 300, the main card. You know? Look, I think this will most likely be the third fight yeah. down. It'll be the third title fight. Yeah. I think. So, yeah. look, is Dana going to go and announce the main event or the co-main event before this fight? No. Um, I think it's... I think it's awesome that we're getting a woman's fight as... No, 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 just, just hear me out. Look, I know that I know that it's not everyone's cup of tea, all right? But the women's divisions in the UFC have come such a long way, especially in the last just few years, in terms of competition at the top. There used to just be one woman dominating everything for so long. We saw it with we saw it with uh, Rousey. We saw <coughs> Rousey. it with Nunes. We've seen it with Thank so many God. of these women who get to the top and just are unbeatable by the rest of their competition. And Wait, we have seen these divisions slowly get more and more stacked with more and more talent. Okay? And uh, I think this is a great I, fight. I get what you're saying. I do. And I, maybe there is a place for a women's MMA fight on the, on the main card. But, you know, it's supposed to be drama, entertainment, craziness, a bit, you know, stuff that's, that's not just down the byline, some different random stuff, just crazy stuff, entertainment. This is just a run-of-the-mill title fight. There's still a lot of room for that, though. There is, but... We've still you want got every single fight to be that on a, on three hundred. You know, I don't know. I, I just think it's going to disappoint. It's not going to be as good as two nine nine. There's no way it's going to be as good as two nine nine. Three hundred should be where they stack all their fights. They maybe think that three hundred is just going to sell itself, right? But mm. whatever. Look, I I'll think be watching. Whatever. I am. I am holding out just because because I love this organization because I love Dana White. I think he. No, I do. I I I love the guy. I've. A good man. Some would say I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to copy his look. Yeah, and you have successfully. Um, maybe I oil myself up from time to time. You're not quite pink enough though. I'm not, but nonetheless, I am holding out hope, big time, that the main event and the co-main will be huge. Mm. Um, and I truly believe that they will be. I think I think that that there will there will be fights that we never saw coming. Probably, yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, and like that will. That will definitely overshadow what's going on here. Yeah, um, I do yeah. think that he that he probably overhyped this announcement. Sure, yeah, sure, it was a big disappointment. Big disappointment. But the fight itself, I Good think, fight. I think it's exactly where it needs to be. But that's just my opinion. That's your opinion. Obviously, <laughs> a lot of people do not agree with me right now. 
it's just frustration. And look, they have announced some pretty damn good fights for the first of all the prelims, and the first fight on the main card is going to yep. be Oliveira and Sarukian, which is a huge fight. Uh, moving into the next announcement, Garbrandt versus Figgy on 300. That's uh, on the prelims, and that's going to be a massive fight. Um, Garbrandt moving up a uh, uh, skill level by quite a significant uh, jump. This is his last chance. He's showing he still wants to test himself, yeah. Yeah. He's showing he still chance, wants... Though, uh, sure. Got to be. Yeah. Where is it? Where is he ranked at the moment? Shall we bring up the bantamweight the um, rankings? I believe he's out of the rankings, uh, but, you know, this fight would obviously put him right back in there. Yeah, because Big E coming off a win against Rob Font in an absolute amazing fight. Mm. Um, he isn't well, ranked. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so he's not ranked yet, but... Big e ranked number you know, he's, eight. He's been at the top before, which is kind of more important than being ranked, I guess, in this case, in this scenario. And he did show in his last fight that he is still... Yeah, and he's... He's won two in right a row. Yeah. So, and he hasn't been knocked out, which is good. He hasn't been clipped too bad. So, But we do know that he has a problem with that chin. Yes. And if anyone's going to find it. Biggie's a fucking lethal weapon. He is a lethal weapon. Weapon. So, <clears throat> oh. I'm, th I'm, th I'm hoping for the best for, uh, for our boy Cody in this fight. But I'm also a big fan of Figgy, so this is going to be fireworks no matter what. Whoever mm. wins, uh, you know, it's pushing them up the, the rankings. If Cody can win, it's his last chance to, you know, solidify himself in the top 15. Uh, it proves to us that he's still got it. And, you know, maybe from there he can he can work his way back up to the top. But If I was Davison, uh, Davison coming off a win against, because I think Rob Font was ranked 7th or... Yeah, he took it 8th. Uh, okay. Eighth. When, eighth. Yeah, when eighth they fought. Thing. Yeah, and now he's fighting an, an unranked guy. This is the perfect move up to bantamweight for him. He's shown that he can step in there against someone in the top, top guys, ten, yeah. handle them with no worries. Kill them. Oh yeah. Uh, but and then he's he's now booked against Cody Garbrandt, who isn't ranked. over uh, isn't ranked, but over everything he's a he's a past champion. And he's a he's one of the bigger names in the bantamweight division. Yeah, it's a big opportunity for um, him to gain some uh, more yeah. steam as well. Yep, because Garbrandt's name does hold quite a bit of uh, weight. You're right. Um, well, we're only 135 pounds. Only 135. It's pounds, not that much weight. It's not that much compared to other humans. Um, We've we'll quickly move on. I think unless you've got more to say about that one. No. Moreno no. versus Royval, the Battle of the Brandons. Battle with the Brandons. They're they having a Brandon Brandons. off, as Brandon uh, off. A, a young Dylan might say, um, if you're listening. Great fight. Not, but anyway. um, yeah, but so Moreno's opponent obviously pulled out. Ruvale stepped in. Perfect opportunity for both these guys to get themselves, the, their names back in the hat for the title shot. Uh, I think uh, it's tough because Ruvale has, both these guys have lost to Pantoja multiple times. Mm. It's tough to to market a a fourth fight for uh, Moreno and a third fight for Royval, especially after what happened in Royval's last fight. If he wins, yeah, it's tough. It's tough, and and <clears throat> it's going to be a banger for sure. Uh, that's that's a it's a great fight, but it is a great fight. Um, Royval did show in that fight against Pento. He got very close. Um, I know that there was a bit of a gas tank problem at the end there. Pantoja, um, yeah, for, for yeah time. for Pantoja. But Royval wasn't able to, to couldn't um, capitalize. No, couldn't capitalize on that, and in turn lost the fight. Mm. So if he can work on his takedown defense and his uh, getting back up from the ground, similar to what we talked about with Johnny Walker, mm. um, you know he had a real fight, a real chance in that fight. He was piecing him up on the feet, he wasn't really getting hurt. Um, he just kept getting taken down with the simplest, like any takedown, he would fall. And I think Moreno was will definitely expose that. Yeah, I I, I believe so too. He's got more power than Royval. He's got crisp boxing, great kicks, and he's also got excellent jiu-jitsu. Excellent jiu-jitsu, yeah. So, yeah, so it's, I, I believe, yeah, I think Moreno will take that one. Um, but it's going to be a banger no matter what. Oh, hell yeah. Two hell. top guys. Yeah. Uh, another really awesome announcement that we just missed in the last episode, Sarukian versus Oliveira for 300. Uh, and in that same announcement, Dustin versus Saint Denis was also. I think we next. finished filming the last episode, and within about yeah. half an hour, this was announced. So yeah, crazy stuff. Yeah, insane. But <clears throat> yeah, great fucking fight. 
Olives, yeah. I feel a little bit bad for him because you know he he did have that title fight lined up, got cut, uh, and obviously you know now and he missed out. Now he's missed out because Islam is injured. Yeah, he's injured. His hand is injured, and he's got Ramadan. So I think he just I think Olives wants to stay busy, and yeah, he's he's picked the right guy to stay busy against. Definitely, this will prove who the legitimate number one contender in this division is. Yep, and I think sure. for for Charles Oliveira, he could have just as easily. Not taking this fight, right? But I think if you're fighting for the championship against Islam next, right? Which, you know, this sets that up, um, even though he was going to be fighting him originally. Whatever. But this this is perfect because Sarukian was going to be one of the guys next in line anyway. If yeah. Charles can take care of Sarukian, he won't have to fight him immediately as soon as he gets the belt, right? Yeah. I mean, and look... Both of these guys could be walking straight in there for a title shot right now, mm. but they're both saying, look, I'm going to test myself against the other guy who is rightfully right at the top there. They're risking it all. They're risking both it all. Yeah. And, and like you say, like both of them could easily step into a title fight right away. But this, it, instead of just leaving it to Dana, they're like, right, let's fucking fight it out. Let's yep. figure out who deserves this title fight, yeah. you or me. Yep. And we'll go from there. Well, because they're both coming off, off wins against Benil Dariush. The same guy. Um, fairly similar fashion. Yeah. Um, however, yeah, Saruki managed to get it done a little bit quicker, which then propelled him right to the top of the title conversation. Um, at that point, before that fight had happened, we were all just waiting for the Charles Islam matchup to be booked again yeah. because yeah. it had just been pulled out. Um, but then Saruki goes in there and puts on an... Clinic. Like... A career highlight of a performance um, against Benny, nonetheless, who's you know he's a tough top guy. Yeah, slightly lacking chin, but whatever. Slightly lacking chin, but a lot of experience at the top level, um, and definitely still a dangerous guy in terms of his skill set. But mm. yeah, this fight here, man, it is it is setting up <clears throat> a, a real banger. Yeah, um, sure, and they're so high level in both the ground game and with their hands. Uh, God, it's going to be awesome. It's going to I, be a technical war. Dude, I like Sarukian for this. You do? And, and I am a Charles Oliveira fan through and through. Yeah. But yeah, I just... He's got that similar style to Islam. He does. And he's the only guy so far, apart from obviously Islam's losses, that has really given him a, a full on, yeah. you know... It was a very close fight. Very, very close, close fight. fight. A hell of a war. Um, Charles, Great obviously, wrestling. in his fight against Islam, wasn't able to do, do that. Yeah, do anything at all, really. It could be Charles's kryptonite for sure. Big, strong guy, great wrestling, good hands as well. You know, Charles got rocked by Islam. He could get rocked again. Charles by gets Sarukian. rocked by everyone. Yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> it's just that again with Sarukian, he's not going to be afraid to come to the ground. That's he's right. He's going to come down there. He's going to try and submit you. And you know, <clears throat> if, I was, I, if he's not careful, that could happen. I heard a little thing that Henry Cejudo was saying about Charles Oliveira. Um, the guy's got almost forty fights on his record, I mm. believe. And only three of them have gone to a decision. He, 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 lives, he lives by a sword and he dies by a sword, is what Cejudo said. And that is that is great for a fan because you know every time you watch a Charles Oliveira fight, he is going in there and he is putting everything on the line. Absolutely. Um, he's risking it all. He's going to take every opportunity he can to finish someone. Um, but vice versa... He gets rocked a lot because of that, um, and he and he gets sat down. And the problem with with yeah, like you say, this fight is Sarukian will not be not be hesitating to fall onto the ground like a like a Justin Gaethje or a Dustin Poirier. In those fights, we saw Charles get rocked, knocked over, sit on his ass, look up at them, and kind of be like, "You're not coming down here." Yeah. So he he gets that time to recover, um, and kind of. Get his breathing back under control and kind of, right, reset. But, yeah. With Sarukin, it's not happening. It's not happening, no. Got another <clears throat> huge fight in the uh, the lightweight division. Up-and-comer, Saint-Denis, Benoit Saint-Denis. Uh, he, <clears throat> we like this he's guy. in there against Dustin. Yeah, we do. We like this guy a lot. Massive opportunity for him. <clears throat> this is a really big opportunity. He's very lucky to have this opportunity. Make it to the fight, Saint-Denis. Because uh, you've got all the skills, uh, what it takes to to finish Dustin, to beat Dustin, it's going to be tough. Dustin can definitely win. 
But if you beat Dustin, this propels you into, you know, stardom mm. easily, quickly. Yeah, big time. Um, yeah, Benoit has been kind of spouting out a little bit lately saying that he is the next BMF. Um, and I think if he can go in there and have uh, like a Dan Hooker level war with Dustin Poirier, that is Very definitely good. what he will what he will get. Dustin is is showing he's got a very extensive career, and against the highest caliber competition, I think one of the most stacked records in the UFC today. Um, Absolutely, Dustin Poirier. So he's a durable guy, um, a hell of a skill set, a black black belt in jujitsu, yeah. and obviously, I Great think boxing. personally. He's got one of my favorite boxing styles in the UFC. Um, really just puts everything together so nicely. Rolls with the punches. Really Rolls well. with the punches. Just It's such a crisp style to watch, man. It yeah. just, and usually he's got a great chin. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, in his last fight, he got head kicked, but that's, you know. Oh. Yep. But, you know, this is, this is either going to be Dustin's, you know, maybe one of his last fights, or maybe it does propel him back into that, um, that title picture, you know, if he can beat St. Denis and then maybe you know, get another fight. In I mean, we're saying this is a big test for, for St. Denis, but I think just as big, it, like this is the first time we've seen Dustin fighting a, a younger, hungry guy since Dan Hooker. Yeah. Um, he's older now. He's older now. He's 35. He has taken that, that knockout recently. He's he had a, a couple of losses before that. Good. I'm glad um, that this fight has been announced. It's going to answer a lot of questions. And. Sure. Dustin didn't need to take this fight. No, no. He could have... Proves he's still hungry that he did take it. He is still hungry. He probably wants another shot at the belt, which, good on him, because that would be very hard to stay motivated after yeah. getting there and losing twice in the same exact fashion. So, I, dude, I love this fight. It's going to keep me up at night. I'm not going to be able to sleep. It's keep me hard. It's going to keep me so hard. Rock solid. Uh, yeah, I can't wait for this. Can't wait for that. Some fucking good announcements right there. Oh, yeah. Some great announcements. Uh... Thank you.